This is the SimPit. I'm Andreas Martin Merck. Welcome to Project Sim Racer. In this career report, we will take a look at how weeks four and five went down in season four of the Skip Barber series. We've already covered weeks one, two, and three in the last career report, so if you didn't watch that, make sure you catch up on those first. All right, for week four, we'd be running 10 laps at Road America. I struggled a bit with grip in turns five, six, and eight, and I was also still working out whether running wide in a carousel would be better, as I had issues getting the tight line right. I did manage to get a qualifying effort in that I was fairly comfortable with at 2 minutes 34.978. For the Sunday strength of field race, which was my only race that week, I started on pole and was ranked 4 out of 15 drivers. I was placed in the third split of 4, which had a field rating of 14.49. If you've ever raced at Road America, especially in these cars, you would know that the draft is huge. There are three extremely long straightaways, and if you can just keep up fairly well with the car in front, you will be able to overtake on the straights. Therefore, I expected attacks right from the beginning. Coming into turn 4, the 9 car braked later than I did and ran into me. My car dived into the road, which damaged the front wing and nose a little, while the 9 car dropped back with a severely damaged front wing. Luckily, I could still make the corner and stay in front, and the damage was so small that I wasn't actually sure I was damaged at that time. That feels okay. I did notice that I generally got a little more oversteer in the aforementioned corners than usual, but I attributed that to race nerves. On lap 2, I lost concentration and almost made a critical mistake. Um, oh shit, that was close. From lap 3, the 9 and 7 cars behind me started fighting for P2 and P3, and I started gapping them. But on lap 5, I had a big slide going into turn 5, and had to remind myself to be a little more careful. That didn't help, however, as one lap later, I spun the car right before the carousel. Looking back, I could probably have used the momentum to turn the car around again, but I did manage to get it off the track fairly quickly and not be in the way. I saw the 9 and 7 car, which were still fighting, going too wide into the carousel and made sure to let them pass before rejoining the track. To my luck, the 9 car spins right after and I stay within drafting range of the 7 car. Now, I had to time my overtake so he wouldn't be able to get back in front of me using the draft. I thought turn 5 would be the optimal place to pass him, as I would hopefully be able to gap him in the twisty section up until the carousel. But I wanted to see if he could make a mistake before I went for the overtake, so I started putting pressure on him on lap 7. He kept cool, however, so on lap 8 I went for the overtake, as I figured that if I couldn't make it stick the first time around, I'd overtake him again on the last lap, two laps later. I did manage to make the pass stick and cross the line for another win. I lost 0.02 safety rating, but gained 86 I rating and 90 championship points. While I am happy about the win, I was close to spinning twice, in which case the results would have looked very different. So definitely some things to work on. I need to be a bit more careful when not chasing someone down. So with that in mind, I moved on to week 5 at Barber Motorsports Park. In preparation for the strength of field race on Sunday, I ran an early qualifying session, but with disappointing results. The lap time was all right, but I made lots of mistakes, the car was all over the place and frankly it's a miracle I didn't crash. But at least I had something to get on the grid with, and so I went for a race outside the strength of field slots. I was graded second in a very mixed grid and had a nice battle with P1. He was obviously faster than me, but I was hoping that if I could get in front quickly I might be able to hold him back as Barb was quite a hard track to pass on. In the end. I kept making mistakes because I was pushing so hard and ended up in P6. For the Sunday strength of field race I was determined to do a lot better. So before that one went down, I tried a few different things to try to stay on track and still be fast. I tried different driving styles, different lines,
and um, some different setups. But to no avail. So I called Sean up to take a look at my driving and he instantly noticed that I was pushing my brake points way too hard which left me out of shape for mid corner. I also often downshifted too early which is very evident in the qualifying lap I showed you and that often made the back end step out. These were bad habits I developed not because I was analyzing the replays and all that but because I was simply looking for the wrong things. I had become blind on my own mistakes really. So there's a lesson. If you're ever stuck just ask someone. If you don't know any sim racers yourself there are loads of sim racing communities out there, one of them being the iRacing forums where there are many helpful people that will gladly take a look at your replays and tell you what you're doing wrong and guide you to become a better sim racer. I had to quickly adjust to this more stable way of driving and my fastest times were a bit slower than before. But overall I was gaining lots of average lap time which would serve me well in a Sunday strength of field race. I missed the final qualifying session and had to make do with the previous one. It didn't make a difference however as I was placed on pole in the second split of 3 with a field rating of 1635 in which I was ranked 7 out of 19 drivers. My main championship rival was right behind me in the 2 car so I had to stay in front of him. I mean I could push a couple of tenths out of each lap but but I don't see any reason to ride. You keep running these 40.2s all race long. You just keep doing that. I'd learned from the race at Road America and didn't push too hard to create an unnecessary gap. Instead, I let the car behind me make the mistakes. Again, but he saved it. He's oh, he is overdriving big time. Well, until a close call on lap 11. What happened was that my spotter suddenly told me that fuel was good for the rest of the race. I thought that was an odd thing to say and that's never happened to me before. So I checked the fuel and apparently I was running qualifying levels of fuel. Now luckily you cannot fill up less than around 7 liters in the skip barber and the estimation looked to confirm what the spotter said, that I'd make it to the end. But that split second that I had my eyes off the road was enough to almost make a race ending mistake. Luckily I escaped this time around. But at the end of lap 14 I realized that the spotter and the fuel estimation had been overly optimistic and that it was going to get very tight with the fuel. I need to save a bit of fuel. Is it going to be that tight? I told Sean that I needed to save fuel and he quickly taught me all the tricks of the fuel saving trait. You can give up quite a bit if you need to short shift, not rev it out on straightaways, coast it into the brakes a little bit. You got one to go at the line, yeah. one to go. Which worked beautifully until I knocked the car into the wrong gear going into turn 13 which almost made me lose control of the car. In fuel saving mode the 2 car was rapidly reeling me in but I managed to just keep him behind and cross the finish line before I completely ran out of fuel. Very well done Andreas. <laughs> I don't think I can make it all the way around again. <laughs> oh, very well done. Amazing consistency. Again, lots of small mistakes to work on, but I've learned a lot from the Road America race, and I'm sure I'll learn lots from this one as well. Well, at least I'll remember to put enough fuel in the tank from now on. I finished week 5 with an I rating of 1782 and a safety rating of 3.23 in my C license safety level. And I was still in the championship lead. In the next episode, I'll report on the last race of the season, and then Sean and I will talk about plans for the future. But if you want more Project Sim Racer before then, make sure you check out the Project Sim Racer section on the Simpit website. Just go to thesimpit.com and then you can find qualifying laps, full races and extended footage. This is the Simpit. I'm Andreas Martin Merck. Thanks for watching Project Sim Racer.